Okay, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to take a photograph such as this for example and we're going to use Photoshop to create a painted on uh, type of an effect to create um, something like you see in this final image here. Um, we're going to use that as part of our Wix website. So if I go back to Wix, there's a I'm just going to choose the blank template. I'm going to use this one here and we're going to scroll down and we're going to replace this image here with the one that we create. So let's go to Photoshop and what we're going to do is we are going to, instead of starting a new document, let's just open the photograph straight up and in Photoshop. So find your image that you're going to use, click open and here it is. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is just unlock our background layer and um, we're going to make the background black and white so that the figure stands out. Um, really well from it. So um, let's go over to our tools here, our selection tools, and if we click and hold and we see the object selection tool, which is a new one, um, this works quite well. And if we click, hold and drag it over the top of our subject like this and let go of the mouse, it'll think for a little bit and then it's going to give you a pretty nice selection of our main figure. All right. Now, let's just, there's a little bit of tidying up to do just here and here. So if we click and hold again our selection tools and just grab the quick selection tool and we just make sure yours is on plus here and just a few little clicks just around the edges um, just to uh, expand that and push the selection over a little bit more and that looks pretty good. Again, your image, each, Im each image will react a little bit differently. Okay, um, now what we want to do is we want to actually have not the figure selected because we want to leave this in color. We want the background selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to select and inverse the selection and that's going to now leave our figure untouched and our, have our background selected. And all we're going to do is we're going to go into our adjustment layers and we're going to go to black and white and we're going to pop a black and white adjustment layer on there and that's going to just apply this effect to the selected area. And you can see over here in our mask, um, the black area is not being affected, which we used our selection for. Um, again, scroll through the presets. I'm going to use this high contrast red filter for this one because it gives us these nice patterns in the background, but you choose a preset that you wish. Now we're going to create a new layer here on top of everything and we're going to double click it and let's call this outline. Okay, and we're going to use this layer to create the black outline on this lady's scarf here. So if we zoom in a bit um, and grab our paintbrush tool just like this and make sure your brushes are showing in your panel here. So if we go to window and we go to brushes that will bring them up, okay? And we just want to use this panel here, okay? Um, if you've got a graphics tablet, you could use that as well, but I find graphic tab graphics tablets are hard to use. Now, what I would do when you are in your brush settings is just go to the hamburger menu here and make sure brush stroke and brush tip are activated because it will actually, if we don't have brush tip activated, it won't show you the shape of it, okay? And when you get into your other brushes here, that comes in quite a bit handy. Um, so let's leave that on. Now if you are using a graphics tablet with the general brushes, um, the first two won't have any pressure sensitivity with your tablet, but these ones will do have pressure sensitivity because, because they say pressure, okay? And they all react a little bit differently, okay? But uh, I'm going to use the mouse because I find it easier. I'm just going to use the hard round edge brush there. And let's go back to black and white color and I'm just going to use black to outline the main areas of the scarf. Um, now the right and left bracket keys will make our brush bigger and smaller and if I hold spacebar and click and drag with the mouse we can pan around. Okay, so I'm just going to do all of the major outlines on the scarf here. If you make a mistake, Command Z will undo. Now I find um, with the, well, you'll probably find with all your fold lines, if you make your brush size a little bit smaller, uh, you have a little bit more control with that and it looks a little bit better. Now let's create another new layer and let's call this one fill. Okay, or maybe scarf fill. Um, and what we're going to do is, uh, let's grab, um, let's double click and let's mix up a color or we can go up to the color icon here and we want a nice vibrant pinky color. We'll keep it the same color. I mean you could change the color to anything you wish. I'm going to use this color here. 
Now, let's go back to our swatches. Now that we've got this color selected, um, let's save this swatch in case we go, we, we, we lose it or anything like that, or we decide we want to go back and we can't quite get the right color. We could use the eyedropper, but it's, I'll show you how to make some swatches. If we click create new swatch here, um, wait a minute, new swatch. Let's do this one, create new group, and let's call it scarf, because we're going to add a couple of colors to here. And within this, let's create a new swatch, and let's just call it uh, hot pink, maybe. Click OK, and there, in that little folder there, in our swatches, is the color that we're going to use for our scarf. OK, now, um, Again, if we start painting, we make our brush size nice and big with the uh, right bracket key. Uh, we don't want to paint over these lines that we created, so we must click, hold and drag and move our layer underneath. All right, and um, you want to carefully go around the edges of this um, and just paint like that. You'll notice I've made a little bit of a mistake here. I'm going to go back with the black and just and just fix that bit up there. All right, so if we go around all the edges nice and carefully, if you go out and make a mistake, Command Z, or you can go back with the rubber tool if you want to. Now that you've done, you can go back and you can just check. You can see there's a spot here if I zoom in that I've made a little mistake on. So you could just grab the rubber tool and just make sure that you've got the hard round brush selected as well with your rubber and you can just kind of tidy these little bits up here. Now we'll create a new layer and we'll call this one shade and we're going to use this one to add some shading to the areas of uh, the scarf. So um, let's just double click this color here. Um, no, we won't do that. We'll select it, make sure it's selected and just double click over here to open your color picker up out and let's just uh, maybe choose down here so we can make a darker tone of this hot pink to act as a shadow click OK and let's add this to our scarf swatches so that we don't lose it and let's call it uh, shade that will do and let's add it in there okay so we've got if we can move it beside it that's better all right and now what we'll do is You'll need to make sure that the shade layer is in the middle because we want it to appear over the, the, the fill layer but underneath the outline so we don't cover up the outline. So make sure you've got the right order and make sure you've got the right layer selected. Um, before we start, we'll go to our scar fill layer and we'll drop the opacity down to maybe 30% or so so we can actually see where the areas of shadow or shade are and we'll just do some some painting in there okay make sure you go back to your shade layer you don't want to do it on the scar fill layer okay shade layer zoom in and and re remember left and right arrow brackets will adjust the size of your brush and you can just add some areas of shade in now obviously a um uh, sorry, a better digital artist would be able to do a much better job of this than me. Uh, however, you get the idea. Uh, you could use a graphics tablet as well, um, so that it has pressure sensitivity and your um, lines will end at a point, which is quite nice. However, whenever I use the graphics tablet myself, I find it very hard to use. Some people love them, some people don't. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to our scarf fill layer. Let's um, put the opacity right back up so we can see our design. Um, we could go and add another layer and do some highlights if we wanted to, uh, but I'm not, we're not going to go into too much detail. Um, and Command minus to zoom out to look at your design. And if you press tab on the keyboard, um, you can see the design without the tools and the panels distracting you. So let's press tab again. Now the last thing we're going to do is add a few little um, hand-drawn image enhancements to this photograph to try to change the mood or the meaning of it or, um, or just make it look cooler. So um, I'm not going to take you through this step by step because we're only going to, we're, we're just going to use some of the techniques that we've already used such as layering, use a brush tool, okay, things like that. So let's go over to this one that I've created here earlier um, and I want to see, there's a few layers here so I want to see them all. So let's just double click on this panel here on any one of the tabs, whoops, double click it and it will hide it. Double, I've lost my layers, double click on the layers and double click on the swatches and that will flatten those panels which is a good new feature in Photoshop.
Um, so, you know, this, this is up to your own imagination. So for me, I created a thought bubble and then I found a picture of the Facebook logo on the internet, placed it in there and did a trace drawing over the top of it. And um, so now she's gone, the, the photograph's gone from, you know, an innocent looking uh, woman staring into space into, you know, now we know, can know her exact thought. She's thinking about, you know, something to do with Facebook or social media. Okay, so we've changed the meaning of this quite drastically. Then I thought, okay, let's go something extreme. I found a picture of a butcher's knife and then I put the knife in there with a bit of blood on it. So now this innocent looking lady is now got murder on her mind. Okay, um, so yeah, this kind of stuff is just up to you and your own imagination. You have fun and play around with your own images. Um, there was a parrot. I thought it might be cool to have a little parrot sitting on her shoulder. It might look nice and I did like the um, patterns in the background here in this lantern and I just got some white paint and the brush and just did a little bit of tracing over the top. Okay, the one I chose to use to pop on the, on the website was the Facebook one. So if we go back to um, our Wix template that we're going to use, um, I just changed the name of this website to social media, put a little heading in here that was already there for me in the template. Are we addicted to our social media? Are we addicted to our mobile phones and social media? And there's this place for our image to go in there, which I've already uploaded. Click that, and there we have it. Are we addicted to our mobile phones and social media?